Well, for those that help deliver all of the packages that many locked-in consumers are ordering, it's been described as Christmas-level volume. But how do you cope with that kind of increase in your business amid a global pandemic? Andrew Williams is the CEO of DHL Express Canada. He's with us now. And thank you for being with us. Um, and I guess I'd like to start, Andrew, with just getting a snapshot from you of what it is you're seeing in your business. How has it changed? Yeah, I mean, I think generally speaking, we are seeing uh, some significant growth right now. You you highlighted it in the open there, Christmas-like volumes. Uh, certainly, we've been through a little bit of a wave here at DHL. We're an international company, of course. We operate in over 220 countries around the world. So we've gone through several phases of this pandemic. Uh, I would say, generally speaking, Q1 was, was okay for us. Revenue was up slightly, profit up slightly, uh, drove some more cash flow into the business. Uh, we saw here, bringing it back to Canada, you know, a, a somewhat uh, a good first quarter, but somewhat challenging April, and then uh, May taking off. And and you know how you how you address that is really by, you know, focusing on your front lines and focusing on your people and making sure you've got the right staffing to to accommodate for the growth that we're seeing in the business. What did you have to do on that front? I mean, imagine uh, it isn't just as easy as snapping your fingers and adding staff where you need them. And there's all the complexity, of course, of the safety of workers uh, right across the whole system. So how big a job was that? Yeah, it was a very big undertaking. I mean, safety of our employees is certainly our number one priority. We have 1,826 team members across the country here in Canada, as an example. Uh, 40 percent, we were able to move to work from home, but 60 percent are frontline uh, employees who are drivers and sorters in our warehouse. Uh, and really what you need to provide for that group, and it's something that I manage personally uh, with my task force on a daily basis, is both the, the physical and mental well-being of the team. You know, the, the basics like making sure everybody has the proper PPE, social distancing, temperature checks before they enter the building uh, is critical, but also the support that you give individuals that are going through challenging times in their own right, you know, daily communication so that they can understand what's happening in the business, um, you know, a contact-free environment for our drivers as an example. There's a lot of things we had to set up. Uh, and then I'd say we were dealing with a challenge, which was uh, in April, things had slowed down a little bit and we had to understand what the what the business would look like and it, and it quickly moved forward and took off in May. And so we've had to start recruiting again, you know, reach back out in the job market, I would say, you know, the types of roles that we're offering are quite attractive. They're full-time positions. And so we're in the process right now, as an example here in Canada, uh, of adding somewhere in the range of 70 to 80 uh, new employees. And it may be impossible really to forecast accurately, uh, Andrew, because we've never been here before. But um, when you look ahead here, as we kind of get into this gradual phase in reopening across the country, what's your expectation about what that will do to volumes? Yeah, I mean, we're really optimistic, ultimately. You know, we believe that the world will continue to trade. Uh, we saw pre-COVID a very strong and robust uh, business here in Canada. You know, the, the country had entered a number of uh, favorable trade deals for, the, for us here. Um, we were making significant investments ourselves, and we were seeing other businesses doing the same, especially in the technology space. And of course, we've got quite a large and diverse population that uh, are really opening up Canada to the rest of the world. So, you know, we do anticipate that things uh, will get back to normal, and we're seeing that already uh, quite quickly as businesses reopen. Certainly, there are some kind of unique drivers. If you look at the, the things that are driving volume in our network right now, uh, China to Canada is a very large trade lane for DHL. Uh, and of course, we are providing all the support we can to move PPE into the country. Uh, you have the U.S. and markets in Europe coming back online rather quickly. Uh, certainly, you see that in the U.S. as an example. Uh, and then I would say as well, uh, there's been an absolute boom in e-commerce uh, as Canadians have uh, time to shop a little bit more online or indeed as customers uh, around the world are buying goods from uh, Canadian companies, uh, we've seen a real boom in e-commerce as well. And so for all of those reasons, uh, you know, we're, we're quite confident. And, and anyways, we believe, you know, consumers will will seek in the future great price, great service and the ethical provision of, uh, of solutions. And as long as you've got that lined up, uh, there's no reason not to be optimistic at the very least. We, we know that a lot of the biggest platforms have kind of long-standing relationships, uh, very strong relationships with very specific delivery companies. You kind of know when you order from X, it's going to be delivered by Y. Uh, is now a time of opportunity because volumes are up, because things are shifting around? Is now the time to kind of get in on other people's business? Uh, absolutely. I mean, our sales team is uh, is very active in the market looking for new opportunities. You know, at DHL Express, we offer uh, 
a, a unique solution in the sense that we are 100% focused on international shipping. And so what we're really bringing to the market here in Canada is helping uh, companies understand how going international can help them grow their business faster. And that's particularly true in the small and medium business segment, many of whom might only use one option on their website right now for shipping and delivery. Uh, and we want to give them another choice, a choice that includes uh, speed and a true international footprint. So absolutely, it's a great time to be out looking for new business as well. And you mentioned the, uh, the China-Canada corridor, corridor. What's the health of that trade relationship at the moment based on the volumes you're seeing? Is it any different than normal? Uh, I mean, based on the volumes we're seeing, the health is quite good. Uh, just in the past few weeks, we've seen a significant uh, increase. Again, getting back to you know, part of the the volume that we're moving is that we are uh, we're significantly involved in the movement of PPE, and that's still a critical. Uh, critical supply for for Canadians, for Canadian hospitals, or even personally here, you, as you've seen some of the announcements over the past 24 hours from the federal government, we're strongly recommending the use of face masks. So that has that has only further increased the trade. But it was already a strong uh, trading lane for us even pre-COVID, uh, our largest inbound trade lane here in Canada, um, and we see that continuing. There is a sense that uh, very few consumers or businesses can capitalize on the low co energy prices at the moment. Yours uh, can capitalize on it. Is, it. is it being felt that you're actually getting a bit of a break on one of your big input costs these days? Sure. I mean, the price of fuel has certainly helped us from an input standpoint. Uh, at, at the same time, what I will say is that as passenger aircraft have come out of the marketplace, as you know, many, um, many airlines have had to cut back or completely eliminate flights. We have our own network at DHL, our own aircraft network, which is helpful, but we also relied on uh, commercial uplift as well. So while we may be seeing some benefit from the lower price of fuel, we are having to make significant investments into our network from an aircraft standpoint to ensure that we've got the capacity that we require for our customers. What kind of investments are you talking about? Uh, so we're talking about securing our own uh, f uh, additional uh, aircraft in our fleet. Uh, and then I would say sort of specific here to Canada, we're also needing to make physical investments in the infrastructure facilities wise as well. So, you know, even as we've gone through this uh, pandemic and some swings in volumes, uh, we've remained very steadfast in our uh, intent to invest here in the market uh, just outside of Toronto and Hamilton at the Hamilton International Airport. Uh, underway is construction of a $100 million, 250,000 square foot uh, automated facility for us that will uh, accommodate the future growth that we see here in Canada. So we're making investments certainly on the capacity side, both from an aircraft uh, and building standpoint. All right. Great to have you with us. Appreciate it, Andrew. Andrew Williams is the CEO of DHL Express Canada.